Good evening. My name is Dele Ayemibo. You are going to another edition of um, Import Export Platform Facebook Live brought to you by Trading Best Trade Academy. This is a program that educates various listeners in different areas of international trade and also trying to answer questions that are critical in the mind of everyone as far as international trade is concerned. My name is Dele. And we, we started discussing um, understanding export market entry strategy um, which day was this? Yesterday. So today we are looking at part four of export market entry strategy. I'll be focusing on export marketing channel this evening. Expo Marketing Channel. Expo Marketing Channel. I will also talk about uh, all dues to be crossed in negotiating a contract with buyer. I will also talk about full corporate offer. Uh, and I think we'll end there today before we continue tomorrow morning. All right. Export market and so the export channel, export marketing channel. There are numerous channels available to an exporter to market his products and services. And the export uh, market research, uh, therefore, should be done in such a way that reveals the best mix of channel needed to penetrate the export market. There are different channels to reach the export market. Your job as an intending expert is to look for how to penetrate those channels. Abubakar Abdulatif, thank you very much for joining. Good evening and welcome. It is very important to know that this mix varies from one export market to the other. If the right set of export marketing channels are used, it increases the effectiveness of exporter in its marketing activities. Inadequate understanding of the right market mix makes many exporters get frustrated at this point. Depending on the nature of what you are selling, who you are targeting, those that buys, that depends also how you go about looking for buyers. There are different options available, different channels available, and you need to find a way to ensure you look for the best mix. The first challenge you can explore is called the channel of the chambers of commerce, bilateral chambers of commerce, bilateral chambers of commerce. So for example, if I want to export to UK, or I'm exporting to South Africa, or to US, or to Malaysia, or to Japan, or to Germany, I look for a chamber of commerce in my country that is in relation with the chamber of commerce on the other side, the bilateral chamber of commerce. For example, Nigerian British Chamber of Commerce, Nigeria America Chamber of Commerce, Nigeria German Business Council, Nigeria Ghana a Business Association, Nigeria uh, China Chamber of Commerce, Nigeria Netherlands Chamber of Commerce, Nigeria Belgium Chamber of Commerce. There's so many chamber of commerce we have here in Nigeria that you can look at and explore as an option to be considered for your transaction. As an option to be considered for your transaction. What exactly should you look out for when you are going for chamber of commerce? Because some chamber of commerce, sincerely, I must confess, are not giving value. Some chamber of commerce are not giving value. Some chamber of commerce are not able to give value. Understandably so, because of the people they engage to do the work. You can't give what you don't have. Sometimes they engage individuals who themselves need to first understand trade. But they are the ones that will organize work with you or supposed to work with you to be able to help you because if you are joining you have a single objective maybe the objective is I need to get buyer that is the objective that's where you're going for it 
I need to get by her. And you're going in with that objective in mind. But you might get in sometimes and be disappointed and not being able to get that buyer, even though you have joined the Chamber of Commerce and paid the dues. So here's my take. In joining the Chamber of Commerce, you need to ask critical questions. What is the need for me? What are the programs you have for exporters specifically who want to ship goods to your partners on the other side? They need to be clear that they also have trade missions, trade exhibitions to that country at least once a year. Some will do twice, at least once a year. Not the one that someone organized there that they are going to attend and take you there, but the one they organized over there. So that means they are working with their other office on the other side, in the other country, and jointly organizing that event. So they have control, they have suggestion. Not that you, the one that you are just going because someone else is doing it, they now invite you, and because you are in that chamber, you jo go there. No. So that when they come back and you don't realize you're there, they won't say, no, you know we are not the one that organized, they invited us. Let it be that they tell you, and probably have history. So you might need to check with members of that chamber who are exporters, who have benefited. Now, I'm saying all this because I've had experiences and sincerely, they are not very palatable experiences. Some of the Chamber of Commerce have good intention, but they don't have enough skill and skilled people, individuals that, are, that will be able to help. They don't have enough individuals that will be able to help. So I don't know if they organize this event, they collect all the payment, but they are not able to achieve their objective. So for some of them, the people that, were, that, that, that attend are just going for holiday, they're just going to, just to see, some are looking for visa, some are looking at different objective. But if you are looking for export market, you need to ask the right questions. If you are looking for export market, you need to ask the right question from the Chamber of Commerce. How many times do you go for trade mission? Who organized this trade mission? Is it a solo exhibition? Is it a, 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 a organized by you um, with a partner with your people over there or the other, I understand the people organize it, they just invite you and then you are inviting us to come. And when you organize, what are the objectives? How much does it cost? Who are those that are coming to see what we are exhibiting? How many, what is the database you have in terms of reaching people that will come? Ask questions that would justify you joining the chamber and attending those kind of events. And for some chamber, you don't need to be a member to even attend such events. So you can go for the event without necessarily being a member. Only that you pay a bit more than those that are members. After a member pays subscription. So you are indirectly paying part of your subscription. <sighs> chamber of Commerce is a very good tool. Huge opportunity. If the secretariat here know what they are doing, work with the right uh, personnel, and have vision to create market for Nigerian businesses on the other side. Clear vision, well articulated, well planned. So at the end of the day, you don't join them and then you don't get value. I have experienced that. I have experienced that. I, I don't mention the chamber, I don't want to mention, but rest assured I have experienced that. Maybe in private, I can mention that, but not in public space like this. Thank you very much for joining. Good evening and welcome. Second export marketing channel, export agent or brokers. Export agent or brokers. Export agents or brokers. Export agents or brokers. These are individuals that simply connect buyer to seller. Some of them are in the importing country, some of them are in the exporting country. They do this for a commission, so they charge you a fee to get this done. They charge you a fee to get this done. Some of them have a website, some of them don't have a website. Some of them are new, some of them are old. But what do you ask for for this? Look for referrals. 
If they've started doing it, ask for referrals. Those that they have used, how much was paid. Typically, people will charge 3 to 5%. That is very important. How much was used, how much was paid. And these are very, very critical, vital, and important um, um, information. We have worked with broker or agent, but this reside on in the buyer's country. That makes life a lot easier for us. So export broker or agent. Now when you are working with broker or agent sometimes also, because they have a, a commission, you might need to give them what is often called a letter of credit. You might need to give them what is often called a letter of, a letter of credit. Sorry. They might need to use a letter of credit rather. That means the buyer will give a letter of credit because that helps them to have control over their commission. Especially if they are not in your country. Because it's possible they are from another country. Exporter, I mean, um, importer's country, actually. Or a neutral country. They don't even have to be an importer or exporter country. They can be a neutral country. They use a letter of credit often called the standby letter of, sorry, um, transferable letter of credit or back to back letter of credit. For, for Africa, most of these kind of person you find them in Dubai, covering Middle East and Africa. The next one is online portal. Trade portal online. Trade portal online. Added your grace. Thank you very much for joining. Good evening and welcome. Trade portal online. Trade portal online is a very viable tool. Very, very, in fact, extremely viable tool, I must say. Trade Potter Online is a very, very viable tool. If it is well used, if it is well deployed, I can assure you, I guarantee you, you will find it easy to get buyers. This portal operates in different ways. Some, as a seller, you will post what you are selling. So when a buyer post is request, you will get the order. Some as a seller, you post what you are selling. Buyer, in the course of searching, will find you out. On the first one, when you post what you are selling, the system already has, has um, highlighted all that you are selling. It's already registered. When a seller drop anything related to what you drop, that means I can put 20 items. Maybe on that 20 item, I have um, um, maybe belt or share butter. If anybody posts a message on share butter, you will be alerted. You will see the detail of the person by email, and then you respond. Whereas for another site, until an intending buyer search and then see you, and send you a message, you may not get an order. And as a seller, sometimes you might have to sell to see people that place orders. So seller place order, buyer place order. As a seller, if a seller place order, and you are, if you are a buyer, sorry, you are a seller, a buyer place order, you will get to see it first than those who are not paid or who are not premium membership on that website different algorithm different process different model for different websites but what is key is that don't post on that website what you don't have number one number two if you are in nigeria and you have a friend abroad who has an address, registered address abroad? If possible, don't use your Nigerian address, even though the good is being shipped from Nigeria. Put an address and phone number that's abroad or email so that when they place order to you and you send a mail and it shows that you, your address is abroad because you have a partner abroad, 
you are going to help them to let down their guard a little. They don't mind if the good is coming from Nigeria. But the person they are dealing with that they will be paying to, they need to be sure it's not in Nigeria for some buyers. Because when you send a mail to some people and your, your, your message reads that you are from Nigeria, sincerely, some don't want to work with you at all. They just blank out. In fact, I've been in a session where a, a foreigner was talking about how they treat emails from Nigeria when they come to their country. The fact that they just ignore it or auto, 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 uh, they, they, they ensure it goes into junk. Program it. You just going to, you don't even get to see it. And the man talking was talking about the fact that the day was expecting a vital information and he almost lost the opportunity because that message came in and went into junk because it was coming from a Nigerian. And forgetting that he had set auto uh, forward in his mail to ensure that any mail from Nigeria is trashed. Just go into junk. So we have a very challenge with reputation in international trade, very serious challenge, which is why I always recommend getting having a rep abroad. Olaji De Shobande, thank you very much for joining. Good evening and welcome. I only recommend having a rep because we have lost credibility big time. And that can, some people don't know how far, if you are in international trade, probably appreciate how this is doing, what it's doing to us. It's doing a great damage to us. The damage, in my opinion, is cannot be quantified. It's killing business. It's killing us. It's killing us very seriously. And we've got to do something about it. But while we are trying to fix it, you need to find a way around it. If you are posting anything online on the trade portal, if you put an address that is Nigeria, I can assure you the chance that someone that needs you will contact you. Or someone that needs you who possess something that makes you to get an alert that you responded to, we respond to your mail, the chance is probably 20%. 20%. 20%. Simply because of the reputation of our people on internet. Until they are able to ascertain your credibility. So, but if you now use the name of someone abroad and they know that, okay, this person resides in the US, in the UK, in Germany, in one of the Western nations, if that person tells them they are going to be getting the good from Nigeria, they don't mind. But they know they are dealing with someone in the UK, so it can be traced. And they know that the chance of credibility is high. Zainab Abdurashid Adegoki, thank you very much for joining. Good evening, madam. Welcome. So this is very important. This is very important. It's extremely important. To the extent that online trade portal is a very important, interesting, and viable option for sourcing for buyers, it has its downside. It has its downside. In the Hina trade show and travels, this is the most important one for me. When you go for a trade show like the Go food in Dubai. If you go online, there is this website called Tofair. T-O-F-A-I-R-S. Tofair.com. That website have a lot of trade fair that are already planned for the year. So for all the one to be done in 2019, for different sectors in different countries at different times, you will find those trade fair there. So it's now for you to look at and say, look, which of this match what I'm trying to export, and then visit there. Which of this match, what I'm trying to do, and then visit there. And when you register for it, and go with your sample, get your stand, and exhibit. There is a Made in Nigeria exhibition holding next week, Wednesday to Saturday. Next week, Wednesday to Saturday, there is a Made in Nigeria exhibition holding in Cote d'Ivoire. Organized by the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry in conjunction with the Nigerian Export Promotion Council. This program is holding next week. You can still register, even though we are finalizing the collation of the list. If you have a product to exhibit, 
But any product you want to exhibit must be a finished product. Manufactured in Nigeria, packaged in Nigeria, or value added in Nigeria. So in Nigeria trade trial, Frava and Trade Show is a very good one. All you need to do is to plan ahead well enough for it and ensure that you are prepared adequately, have all your prizes, have all your information, such that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you have adequate information to be able to ensure that what you are shipping is delivered at a good price in the right quality so the buyer can be happy for a repeat business. Friends and relatives abroad is another channel to read buyers. Friends and relatives abroad. Remember we are discussing export marketing channels. Friends and relatives abroad are another very viable, very interesting, very important channel that you can use to reach buyers. These friends and relatives abroad are viable asset that you can use to get buyers. What you need to do is to educate them. You get the education, then educate your people, your friends, your relatives abroad. Educate them. Get enough material for them. Let them become your agent. So it's like the second step we talk about, export agent, they can now become an export agent for you and help you to get buyers and make a commission. Or you partner. They buy from you and resell. Or they look for the buyer and then a commission. Whichever way, you can always engage a friend and relative abroad. For me, this has proven very successful. I have clients who are working with their friends, South Africa, have clients who are working with their husband in the UK. I have clients who are working with their wife in Canada. I have clients who have also had to work with their siblings in Ireland. You can do it. A lot of people have done it. You can do it. Your friends have brought a valuable asset. If you know what to do to convert them to an asset to be used to achieve awesome objective, not just for you, but for Nigeria in a foreign land. But for Nigeria in a foreign land. You know, some people are skeptical, friends, and relatives, blah, blah, blah. You know, if you don't trust the other party, there are ways you can go about it, such that when payment is made, payment comes to you straight, and you pay their commission from here. If you don't want them to be paid. But what you must learn is you have to trust someone. You just must learn to trust someone. You just must learn to trust someone and find a way of putting control in place to minimize the exhibition of their foolishness, if they have any fiber of foolishness in them. But I can assure you that those friends and relatives abroad are viable assets, especially for those that have time to move around for you. If they come around during the week because they are working, you know, they work in those places, the way they work there. He might work, move over the weekend, that's fine. What is important and critical here is the fact that you have a friend and relative abroad that can help you ma market these things and tell people over there about the value you can deliver. About the value you can deliver. Like I said, they are not just involved for fun, they are involved to add value. They are involved to add value. And in adding value, they earn income. That is big. That is great. That is important. That they are going to earn income, you don't know how much that will do for you. You don't know how much that will do for you. That's so important. That's so critical. That's so vital for you. Lastly, electronic and print media. Electronic and print media. 
Another very important area, very important and vital area. You can decide to advertise there on online, uh, offline, billboard, newspaper, magazines. And I'll be talking about advertisement online when I discuss ICT as a viable tool for export market entry. That's one of the things we'll be discussing maybe, maybe before the end of this month. As a viable tool for export market entry. So electronic and print media. Electronic and print media. Very, very important. Electronic and print media. Very, very important. A way of promoting your product. Reaching to the market. And getting the market to respond. So as I round off today, I will go through all the export marketing channel again. Chatting through reach, you can communicate to a prospective buyer who might be interested in buying your product. Number one, I mentioned Chamber of Commerce, and I mentioned something very vital about Chamber of Commerce. The fact that Chamber of Commerce is good, is great, is awesome, is important, is wonderful. However, check them out to be sure they will deliver value to you. Ask questions before you join them. Look for the one that is related to the market you are targeting and join them. I mentioned export broker and agent who are very important in helping you get buyers on the other side. Export broker and agent. I mentioned um, online trade portals. Online trade portals. I mentioned international travel and trade shows. You know, I mentioned trade shows. I didn't talk about travel. International travel, if you are going for vacation, you can actually use it as an opportunity to look for buyers. If you are interested in export and you go for vacation abroad regularly, you have a awesome opportunity to look for buyers anytime you are abroad for vacation. All you need to do is, me, I always have sample of products. Just let me know. I can always get sample for you. So go into that country with them. And if you get buyer in the country, then we can get the person producing locally to produce in your brand name, and then you can begin to export those products. Friends and relatives abroad, another very important option. And lastly, electronic and print media. Thank you very much for listening again this evening. My name remains Delia Imibo, and this is Import Export Platform Facebook Live from 3 Team Pest Trade Academy. We come up every day, 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. So between 8 and 9 a.m., and between 6 and 7 p.m. every day, Monday to Friday. And on Saturday, 7 a.m., 8 p.m. On Sunday, 2 p.m., 8 p.m. So that means seven days a week, we are online for about an hour every day, talking about international trade, especially on export, making the information readily available to you out there. Dalton Coca, thank you very much for joining. Good evening and welcome. Bye for now and see you tomorrow morning by 8 a.m. Have a good evening.